We are here with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're speaking with Barbara Ann Selland, one of two Teachers of the Year from the um, Twin Rivers Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Well, congratulations on being a Teacher of the Year. It's very exciting. Oh, it's thrilling, yes. <laughs> I can't believe it. Well, uh, tell us where you teach. Tell us what you teach. I teach at uh, Norwood Junior High School um, in Twin Rivers Unified School District, uh, North Sac area. And I teach uh, seventh grade English, um, GATE program, and the standard English. I also teach uh, yearbook for eighth graders and art for eighth grade. Um, so I have a busy, crazy, hectic, phenomenal schedule. I mean, I wouldn't trade it. I love it. I love the insanity of it. So you're working with um, creativity, with creative minds. Mm -hmm. What's it like trying to not only manage creative minds, but creative junior high kids? Ooh. Um, they're already in that kind of that creative stint. You know, they're really what's where the brain's dismantling itself. And um, being a creative teacher, whether it's bringing art into my English classroom, or whether mm. it's with my yearbook kids and we're looking at design and layout, or my art students and looking at shape and line, everything's part of that remantling itself. And so I know that whatever I'm presenting in the classroom with the creativity is going to go in and become part of that newly formed brain. As, as they become adults, so it's yeah. kind of cool. It is. So, so what was your reaction when you found out you were a teacher of the year? Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, excitement, thrilling! I couldn't believe it. Um, an honor, you know. So the first thing you think is, oh my, oh my goodness, really me? You know, I feel like Meryl Streep a little bit with, oh my gosh, me? Really, you love me? <laughs> kind of thing. And and uh, then you know, it's like. Um, you work around such great teachers and mm -hmm. um, people that just are passionate about what they do in education and in their classroom. And so for me to be uh, selected by my peers um, as one of that, to represent them, it's uh, really, truly an honor. So tell us a little bit about what you do and maybe what you do to motivate students uh, in your classroom. Hmm. Is it easy? Uh, there are times when you just kind of want to throw up your hands, I think. But no, I mean, uh, it's it's not always easy. It's challenging, and I've never passed away a challenge. I'm always up for up for that challenge, and um, you know, motivating them. I think really learning about what makes them tick, what they like, and what they're interested in, and um, how to make that connection. Um, you know, uh, whether it's uh, teaching a novel or a short story or even the dryness of grammar can really have some interesting things, you know, especially when I tell my students this is the mathematical side of English and they're like, there's no math in English. <laughs> they say, yeah, there's no crying in baseball, but there's math in English. Right. So um, just really trying to find what, what works for them and trying different things and never giving up. And every year is a new year in teaching. I've never taught the same way twice, even in the same day. I don't necessarily teach the same thing. I may pre present the same story, but not in the same capacity for each class. Everyone's different. Each class's uh, dynamic is, is different from the one before. And um, you know, you change things, you mix things up just for your own personal self. So that keeps it interesting for me. And I think if teaching is interesting for me, it's going to be interesting to my students. So you talked about making a connection mm -hmm. with the students, a personal connection. Is it challenging? Yeah, it has its challenges. You know, you, they they um, don't necessarily want to have that connection right away. They're, they're still trying to test out everything, see where everything is at. Um, and but really make a connection when it comes to their writing getting them to write about uh, things that they're interested in themselves, uh, journaling, um, and learning about themselves through what they have to say in their writing. And then helping them make choices for what they're going to read, if they're, if they're uh, presenting different novels. Once a week I try and do a little novel chat. Things that I'm reading, try and bring it in, share it, show it to the kids. And it's always fun to see the kids you know, scramble to try and get that book off the shelf. So there's always ways and different ways to make connections with kids. It's not, all, it's not uh, the same way every kid. It's different every time. And you try it. And if it doesn't work, you try another way. Mm -hmm. You ask a lot of you making making those phone calls to parents, making connections with them, and trying to say, you know, I'm here to support you. I'm I'm here to make sure that you um, are the best that you can be. And wherever I can do as a teacher, before school, after school, during the class, come see me, talk to me. How important is it to make that connection with the family? Oh, it's very important. Can you explain that. Yeah, the. You, 
family is everything. You know, um, when, you, when you think about who we are as people, what's, you know, we think about what makes us roots us and grounds us, it's our family. So being able to call a family and talk to them about what's going on. And not just, I think a lot of people think, oh, you only call about the bad. No, you call about the good. You know, and try and make that first connection at the beginning of the year, um, hopefully through your back to school night, but through also through phone calls, just saying, hello, my name is you know, Miss Selland, I have your child in third period English, just wanted to introduce myself, and just, just kind of start that rapport right at the beginning. And uh, then when a parent calls, trying to make the phone call back as fast as possible, or email, making my website available um, for everything that needs to go on in my classroom, so they're available to parents and students to download, because you know, a lot of PDF documents, a lot of things that we're doing in the class, so just really being available uh, to the family and uh, by making that uh, connection with, with them makes it easier in my class and when my students know that I care for them, I care for their family, and uh, it just helps. Do you use your website just for supplemental materials or is that kind of a, a big part of, your, of what you teach and you do something different in the classroom? It's, it's connected to my classroom. Okay. Um, uh, this last year I did a, a blog with uh, The Hobbit when I taught The Hobbit and when I taught The Westing Game and I had places where the students could go and I would present questions and things and they would uh, thread through and blog and mm. about things and I would blog and you know, we would blog back and forth with them about what was taking place um, especially when we're doing The Westing Game which is a murder mystery and they're trying to figure out who done it so they're all pitching ideas and what's going on and, and I <coughs> cut out the last part of the pages of the book so they couldn't figure out who <laughs> <laughs> didn't, because I didn't, because I have a lot of students. Two years ago, I left it in there, and I had kids knowing what happened. They're going oh. to the back of the book, and they're during class, and they're reading it. And oh, I know what happened. It's like, okay, next year we're cutting those pages out. So the see. back end of their book is cut out, and they're like, what happened to that? Oh, I don't know. It's a mystery. <laughs> mystery. It's a mystery book. It's a mystery. You know, or, or The Hobbit, where we're talking about, you know, Bilbo and his his adventures, and um, so that so the, the blogging and such taking place and proposing a question or just a word, just saying, tell me about the word home and what's it mean to you, and then they write about that through. through and a lot of them, they, they're so connected to the Internet and, and those kinds of things that to not use those resources sources for them. And that was the very first time I, I stepped out and adventured that way. Usually my, you know, my website just contains what's going on in the class, what we're covering, here's the resources that I'm using in the room, if you've lost it, that kind of thing. Um, you know, those, and this kind of get to know me. This time, I, I have, of course, that's still there, but then I added the other feature in. Mm. Well, the technology is such a big part of a student's life yeah. these days. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and, and, and making sure that I'm trying to, to use it uh, to enhance the teaching that's going on in the room. So what inspired you to be a teacher? Hmm. Well, I, I um, grew too big and too tall to be a jockey, so that kind of got through out, <laughs> of the, out of the way. And um, I loved, wanted to be an artist, and the one they kept saying the word starving that went in front of it, I kind of went, I don't want to starve. Mm -hmm. And uh, But I was very much always involved, uh, whether it was through church organizations, um, and uh, such in youth and uh, always being some way connected to that. Um, and when I was um, in college, early in college, um, I was working at a, at a uh, Christian school and uh, but really had theater on my heart and really wanted to be involved in in the theater. And uh, one of my uh, wonderful teachers uh, was talking to me just you know in her office about what upcoming play that we were doing and um, just looks at me and says, you're, you're going to be a teacher when you, when you get done with this. I said, I'm not going to be a teacher, you know, I'm mm. going to be an actress, I'm going to be on the stage, I'm going to be a star, you know. And, <laughs> and she just really gets serious with me and she looks at me and she says, remember this, the theater is fickle, but education and teaching lasts forever. And that's where you need to be. Mm. You know, and I kept thinking, well, I've always been involved with the youth. It's, you know, I've been, you know, I'm excited about kids and watching them grow and change. and. And, uh, you know, but so I said, why not? Why not take a step out that direction? And uh, found that it was really, every day is on stage for me. Every day is mm -hmm. a new, new day um, to present to a, to a different group of, you know, same group of kids, but they're always different when they, when they enter my room. 
And I'm not to say in any way, shape, or form that I am that you know uh, sage on the stage kind of thing. I'm more more the guide on the side with them. And uh, but but there, I want them to shine. I want them to see their possibilities, just as my my teachers have seen in my past my possibilities and my potential. I want them to see their possibilities and potential. And uh, you can't ask for any more exciting when you have a kid that comes back a few years later and just says, "I remember when we did mm -hmm. this, and you're still teaching that, aren't you? And we're still you're still doing that, aren't you? And do you remember me?" And so you, and you say their name and they're like, oh my gosh, you remember me. It's like, of course, how can I forget any of my students? You know, you're part of my heart. You're part of who I am. Mm. Well, congratulations to you on being named one of the two teachers well, of the year for you. the Twin Rivers District. We're speaking with thank Barbara you. Ann Salad. Thanks for your time. Well, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it.